Okay, sports fans, it's time for the Unnamed Sports Show with your host, Joshua Griffith. Hello and welcome to the Unnamed Sports Show here on the Sports Talk by Network, where we talk sports 24-7, 365. I am your host, Joshua Griffith, as Don Andrews kindly announced me. Thank you, Don. Today on the show, I will be joined by the one and only Canucks superfan, Clay Emo. So me and Clay chatted about how he got his start into being a Canucks fan, um, his takes of the season so far, and we talked about some of his amazing parody videos. So I really hope that you guys enjoy this chat with Clay. Before we get into that, make sure you hit the like button down at the bottom. Subscribe to the Sports Talkline channel as we hit over 200,000 subscribers. So thank you very much to everyone that has already subscribed. And if you haven't, make sure to do so down at the bottom. Join the Sports Talk Line Network, be uh, one of the super subscribers, and you get lots of bonus content that we'll have out for you. And make sure to check out the new Sports Talk Line's fully interactive website. And if you're an NFL fan, get ready for this. We have some amazing stuff with our NFL draft cards. So check that out on the Sports Talk Line website. You just punch that in Twitter, Sports Talk Line, into Google, into YouTube, into anything, and you're going to find that. So without further ado, here is my interview with the one and only canucks clay all right so i'm joined now on the unnamed sports show by the one and only president of the good looking canucks positivity club someone who needs no introduction from canucks fans but i will give one anyway canucks clay clay emo thank you so much for joining me today excited to finally get you on the show to talk some canucks yes joshua thanks for having me congrats on all everything that you're doing and i yeah i can't wait to chat about whatever we end up chatting about we were chatting before we press go and i, I think it's gonna go pretty quick pretty darn quick here Yes, and a rookie mistake for me to not record everything in the green room for all that bonus material, but uh, that's probably why we don't have very much bonus material on the Sports Talk Line Network, but hey, we'll, we'll get to that later. Um, first and most importantly, are you and your family staying healthy during these times? Yeah, thank you for asking. Everything is good. You know, our three kids are pretty, they're all teens now, 19, 17, and 13. Right. Oldest one sitting at UBC online business school, and the other two are in high school, grade 12 and grade 8. Uh, so they're safe. Uh, they're studying um, the two high school kids back and forth um, to school and then Sean's studying at home. And then my wife, Gail, she's a teacher um, and she's been safe. She teaches in a Catholic school, but they're one cohort, as you know, so to speak. So um, she's been okay. And for me, yeah, I, I didn't get much of a break. Actually, I worked for the Catholic Archdiocese. We had two months at home, but we've been back. And um, But typical good COVID protocols and not doing a lot of ministry at the churches themselves, just like what we've been talking about, doing everything online. But uh, so far, we've been blessed, uh, and we're, we're pretty good about keeping, you know, things tight and, and safe. So we're, we're doing okay. Thank you for asking. That's good to hear. Yeah. And, and um, thank you for, for all of the work that you guys do with, uh, with the church and everything like that. That's uh, very admirable of you, and uh, I'm sure it helps a lot of people. Uh, so, so thank you for that. Um, I appreciate that. Uh, so Clay, I want to talk about so much things today. I mean, I want to talk about some you know, your parody videos. You know, I want to talk about your fandom being Canucks clay the GLCPC but I also want to talk some Canucks with you and since it's fresh on Canucks fans mind we had our big 5-1 victory last night over the Calgary Flames it, it's kind of a turnaround I mean I, I caught your your segment yesterday after the game to kind of dissect it but where do you think this team's going did you like the win did you see a lot of positives I mean I know you are the president of the club so we're going to get <laughs> positives but what did you make of the game and basically the last week for the Canucks? Yeah, truly, it was a complete victory. I'd say the only other victory that was just as complete was that 4-1 victory over Winnipeg. Two strong games, um, a, a really strong series against Calgary. We got five out of eight points, could have had six, you could argue. Um, I just worry, Joshua, that it's a little bit too late, right? It's so yeah. hard to make up ground in, in our little North Division because um, we're playing all the teams that we're chasing all the time. So that's good and bad. You add in these extra points, right? These shootout points and these overtime points. It is tough to make ground. I'm a little bit worried that the Canucks dug themselves too big of a hole just with their horrible performances against Toronto, Montreal. Having said that, yeah, complete everything. The lotto line was good. Hopey was fine. Even, uh, you know, Jordy Ben scoring, Nate Schmidt scoring. Hoglander, a beast quietly, another two assists. Horvat uh, uh, eluding Jacob Markstrom's attempt to take him out like he did to Pearson. There were so many good things in the game. Um, and I, I really think the Canucks... You know, we've, we've talked about this that and others have as well. They were they didn't have an identity, right? The, the bubble identity was gone. All these new players, Miller's so slow to get going. Petey's so slow to get going. Hughes is scoring, but getting scored on every time he's on the ice. 
So I think in the last week and a half or so, the end of the Toronto series and throughout the Calgary series, they finally have an identity. It's more structured. It's a hardworking team. It's a disciplined team. And when you can, when you can be tougher in your own end, that creates offense. And now we've seen Besser, Pedersen, Miller, Horvat started to light it up a little bit more. And that's what the Canucks need to do. I don't know if they can make it, Joshua. I don't know what you think, how optimistic you are. But uh, I always say, let Toronto, Montreal, and Ottawa win. Heck, even let one of Winnipeg, Calgary, and Edmonton win. As long as the other two teams, i.e., say, for instance, Calgary and Edmonton, are losing all the time, um, then we, we have a shot. But it's not the best shot right now. Yeah, I heard that. that, that we have to pick our, our battles as Canucks fans who we're to, you know, choosing for in this North Division. Because yeah. you said there's so many the three point games and every time that a team plays they're they're playing either somebody directly above them or directly behind them more or less. Exactly. Um, and as it goes to with them running out of time, I mean, they have, they're already at 20 games. I, I think this next six game stretch, the two against Winnipeg, the two against Edmonton at home, and then the two against on Winnipeg on the road are going to say a lot for what this Canucks season is going to have playoff wise. I mean, yeah. Regardless of playoffs, because I don't think that everyone had them as a lock for playoffs, but I, I think that we're seeing some some better things than we did from the start of the season. And you, and you mentioned an identity. Um, some of it seems to be coming from the Horvat, Pearson, and Hoaglander line. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you make of their work ethic? And do you think that's something that you know can be infectious to the rest of the team, and has kind of maybe rubbed off? And and the captain seems to be doing his job a bit more. Yeah, great question. You know, you look at them as a as a line, Joshua, and you know they're not expected to score. That's the lot of line's job, but mm-hmm. they are expected to chip in, and they're certainly not supposed to get scored on because there's the Horvat supposed to be the matchup guy. I think we knew what we had in Horvat. He he started great, he dipped a little bit, and he's getting he's good again. But everyone knows what we have in Horvat. I think people know what we have in Pearson as well. I think Hoglander has been the revelation, and the fact that when you see your rookie as maybe the hardest working guy on the ice, the guy who doesn't lose a puck battle or, or he makes darn well, uh, you know, he makes sure that he's right in that puck battle to the very end. When you see him getting cut in the face, coming back in the next period and then, and then playing with his big shiner on his eye. Um, I think that's the infectious part. I think that's the part that inspires the rest of his teammates in there. The veterans are saying, well, this guy is making whatever 800, 900 grand and doing all this. Um, I think we can pull up our socks as well. So I, I do think that collectively they can be they can be a matchup problem for some teams for sure because not only are they trying to shut down top lines but they can go out and you're right and, and put the puck in the net and, and score on other lines so they're going to be very key they're going to be very key obviously and I don't know what you think you know I keep debating about this Tanner Pearson thing he's a free agent he's going to make f- at least four million dollars next year that's kind of Pod Coles in spot right next season but he's doing a lot of good things right he's great on the boards he's great defensively but that is $4 million that you could allocate to Pedersen, Hughes, Demko. So I, I keep going back and forth. I don't know what you think about that, about the whole Tanner Pearson thing. If we're out of a playoff spot in the trade deadline, maybe do you flip them for an, a draft pick? I don't know. There's so many things, so many different ways it can go. Yeah, and I mean, Tanner Pearson could be an asset. But I mean, Vancouver's, you know, very much likes to just not trade players at the deadline and then let them walk for nothing. Um, and as far as the, the, the off season is going to be so interesting this year, because I don't think that there's going to be the same people making the, the decisions that are right now. So, mm-hmm. I mean, any speculation right now is like, well, it might not be the same person deciding things down the line. Yeah. I mean, point. but, but Hoaglander has just been, he, he's been so fun to watch. I mean, I almost find myself I'm like, tuning into the game because I'm like, okay, I want to see what Hoaglander is going to do this game. I mean, I had this conversation with a couple of people at work and I was just saying, like every time he gets the puck behind the net, I'm so excited. It's true. It's so true. <laughs> and, and, and his shooting percentage stinks, right? It's only 8% yeah. he, he's getting open. So imagine if, if he just starts to, con- uh, you know, um, score a, more, a few more of those. It, he's going to be, well, what a revelation, like I said, as a rookie, right? 20 games into his career. One of the things that I really like about him is um, just the, his ability to – like his hockey sense too. And like, he gets so much takeaways. I think he's top 10 in the league in takeaways because he, he seems to be in the right spot defensively or in the neutral zone. He like, he's one step ahead. Whereas some players, you know, they have that, that second where they have to figure, okay, where am I supposed to, what am I supposed to do? Where am I supposed to be? And he's yeah. just there and his sticks there. And, and, you know, you're seeing it and it's exciting just to, to see what we're going to get as Canucks fans out of him in the future. 
And as you know, we've been pretty spoiled with the rookies. I'm not, I'm not making any proclamations that he's going to be a Calder Trophy finalist, but um, add him to the list of Besser, Pedersen, Hughes, Nell Huglander. And then if it's Pod Colson next year, imagine going five for five. That's pretty cool. Well, and, and two, from his work ethic, from, from the, the sounds of it, him to, to be like, okay, well, I have this chance to be in, in another elite rookie class on the Vancouver Canucks. And he seems like he wants to do it. Be like, okay, if I'm that guy this year, <laughs> I'm going to do it. And it looks like he's uh, totally embraced that challenge. Yeah, fine with me. Fine with me. Uh, okay. So joined by Canucks Clay here on the Unnamed Sports Show. And can, Clay, let's get into some of your, your fandom stuff here. I mean, how did you become a Canucks fan and how did it get to this level? <laughs> <laughs> well, truly, Joshua, I've been, a, I've been a Canucks fan since birth. I'm 46 years old. So what do I got? Like, do I have 20 years on you or what? Uh, you got 14. Okay. <laughs> okay. So at least well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so um, born and raised a Canucks fan, but truly I have fond memories of uh, my dad listening to the games on CKNW yeah. with uh, Tom Larshaw, Jim Robson, me and my brother listening to all the games. Obviously back then all the games weren't televised. So I truly uh, grew up, grew up listening, watching them whenever they were on Hockey Night Canada, very rare, but yes, I, I grew up as a Canucks fan only played street hockey, never the best skater. Um, so I, I wasn't ice hockey, but a lot of street hockey. But really, um, then I, uh, I started to get more involved as I got older, right? I remember the 82 cup run, I was eight years old, 94. I was 20 years old then, of course. Uh, around 2010, 2011, while still being a, a big fan, I bought, um, I came into season tickets uh, with my, my friend, Mike. His partner moved away to Calgary. And then I said, what are you doing with that seat? He goes, well, I was going to sell it. I said, um, sell it to me. I made sure to check with my, my wife, Gail. As you can imagine, she, she's the ultimate boss. She goes, yeah, as long as you're not going to all 41 games a year, right? So, um, <laughs> But now I've been a season ticket holder. What a year to come in, right? 2010, yeah. 2011. But I've been a season ticket holder. So I say it's, it's three things, Joshua, that's elevated my, my fandom. It's becoming a season ticket holder, for sure. Mm -hmm. Then it's, well, it's two things, actually, because I'm going to roll everything else into one. I know we're going to talk about it. Is social media, YouTube parody songs. It's just the creative aspect. And not all of them go well and not all of them are well received. But at least I'm willing to, just like you, you're willing to stick your neck out there, whether it's in professionally or personally, and just try something new. I've been doing that for the past 10 years. So I really think it's it's becoming a season ticket holder, number one. But then combining that with my, my um, creativity uh, when it comes to vlogging or or poems, haiku, or especially the songs, I think those two things, and then social media has kind of been the you know the uh, underneath it, the underbelly to um, not so much the season ticket part, but definitely the creative side. Okay, well, let's get into your parody songs. Like you said, you've been doing it since 2010. Um, yeah. I was looking back the last little bit Gosh. at some of your parody songs, and it just keeps going and going and going and going and like you said holy smokes you guys have so much fun with it whether you're doing it with uh the amazingly talented murray huey or yes. you know your family or just some other your friends maybe yeah. they look like in some of the videos but holy smokes you have fun with it um a <laughs> couple of the ones that kind of stood out for me sure. um Let's hear uh, it. under john tortorella <laughs> so yes Let's so, hear yes. the story behind the Under John so, Tortorella parody video. The Rihanna song, Umbrella, AA. So that was very popular. And uh, Umbrella, Ella, John Tortorella, Ella. So yeah, it was Marie. So Marie um, is my most frequent collabor collaborator, of course. And we all know how awesome she is singing yes. the anthems, doing her thing. And, and she's so trusting, man. We, we'll, we can talk about the process in a bit. But for that particular song, yeah, it was fun. It just Rihanna song was popular. And then we wrote a song and you, you saw like there was no mics, bad lighting. You know, I, I kind of proud of my pride. I take pride in being like a one take wonder sometimes for better, for worse. Huh? But even back then, the production value is so bad. It's so echoey. My piano is just overpowering Marie's voice, whatever. But we had a lot of fun just singing about John Tortorella coming here and what it was going to be like playing under John Tortorella. So instead of under my umbrella, is under John Tortorella. And that was the genesis of that particular song. So we, we picked up on a lot of his nuances, his, his uh, you know, uh, reputation for being a hothead with the media, with his own players, asking the Sedins to kill penalties and block shots. Those are the kind of, some of the kind of things that we joked around up in the song. It was, a, it was a good one. I enjoyed that one. Thank you. Um, another one too, uh, it was a Prince parody. And this one, oh. 
May of 2016, I think if I have that correct, with yep. so with pick five. Yeah. So <laughs> this was a bit of a stretch. Some of these are a bit of stretch. <laughs> I oh, think that's Prince, that's the, you can tell I picked the ones that are a bit of a stretch. <laughs> I think Prince uh, just passed away, and we wanted to do. Um, in, in all seriousness, Joshua, we want, although it's called a parody, we want to do a quick yeah. tribute to him as well. So instead of When Doves Cry, it was with, with Pick 5. And creatively, or so brilliantly, we tied it into the NHL draft, entry draft, where we knew that we were going to get Pick 5 because we they had already done the, the lottery and all that kind of yeah. thing. So we sang about maybe it's Ole Levy who we ended up uh, picking. Maybe it was Matthew Kachuk or whatever. And we did a song basically lamenting how we weren't going to pick in the top one, two, three, four. But who were we going to get with pick number five? Yeah, it was fantastic. Do you have <laughs> Clay? Do you have any that like stand out for you that you look back and you're like, okay, that's one I really enjoyed. Maybe if it wasn't one of your, because like you said, you've done so many that yeah, some people have liked a lot. Some people yeah haven't really liked but is there one that like stood out for you yeah and it's really funny just where i talk about a couple of them they really go joshua they're as well received as the canucks are doing as well as they're playing so the canucks are playing well and the, it could be the worst video ever but people will love it because the canucks are playing well it could be the best video ever and the canucks are losing and they'll say oh they should spend more time you know um learning how to play hockey rather than being in this video so for instance one of my favorites was with jake Vertanen and and Ben Hutton were in our Canucks Christmas wrap. So that was Marie, Ariel, me. And then we went down to Rogers Arena and, and we, had, they, we didn't know what players we get. They just told us we'd have players. And of course, they're going to put the rookies in, right? We're not going to get Daniel and Henrik like, like dancing and singing with us. But they had Jake Vertanen and Ben Hutton in our music video. It was, it was hilarious. So I think one thing I will say is the Canucks have been so good. Even uh, the first few years, they knew I was doing it. They would share it on the Canucks.com, their old school website back in the day, discussion boards. But then we simply asked them once, hey, would you like to collab? So we've done about six or eight videos, not for the team, with the team, meaning That's their awesome. production people, their cameras, their, their lighting, their sound engineers. So it's been three or four Canucks videos, Christmas videos, um, a, a High Hopes parody, a 53 Horvat Magic that I always tweet out after Horvat scores. And then even as recently as um, the Brady Bunch, right? That when they had the 70s night. Oh, that one. Yes. I almost that was thought us. about that, was, that one. That was us, the Canucks Bunch. But that the was one, so uh, good. Yeah, thank you. The, the two I'll talk about really quick. Any Christmas one's fun. And those ones actually don't always involve Marie. Uh, sometimes I bring my, my friends in. And we have this guy named Kevin who we say is our foreign exchange student. But really, he was born and raised in Burnaby. So we always have fun with that guy. And But the one that I guess got us the most, the most play was um, how sweet it is to be deeked by you. So it's Marvin Gaye's How Sweet It Is to Be Loved by You. Mm -hmm. And it was just me and Marie, one take wonder in, in my living room, just 20 feet from here. But Hockey Night in Canada picked it up and then the NHL picked it up. So Hockey Night in Canada picked wow. it up and they showed it to Pedersen on TV. And then when yes. I then I met him two months later at the All-Star Game and he he recognized me from, from that song, which is kind of cool. And then I got nominated for an NHL Fan Award as Video of the Year, which is, which is neat. Now we got pummeled by a, a guy walking through a Montreal Canadiens concourse just saying, <gasps> Thomas Tatar, remember that? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yeah, but in that guy pummeled us. <laughs> in in fairness, that was so amazing. It was. It was. I, to this day, whenever he scores, me and my my roommate's French Canadian, and yeah. we, we both will go. Thomas to Tatar. There you go. We, so like, that <laughs> three seconds of spontaneous video pummeled mine and Marie's, uh, you know, three weeks of planning and three minutes song, but that's fine. We're not bitter at all. No. So I just, I just love it. I just love the chance to express my fandom and I, and, and be, yeah, be creative, a little, uh, be a little bit creative. Well, it kind of brings me to what I wanted to touch on next with you. Sure. Like you seem to have got so many cool opportunities, whether it like just be on, on the news, um, doing interviews about your Canucks fandom, you know, helping out the Canucks with like playoff cheering videos and stuff, <laughs> or um, just, you know, being at an empty arena, just accompanying Marie, like you said, who, uh, you know, you guys are seem to be your close friends and uh, collaboration partners and stuff. And like, what's the, the coolest thing that you think that you've done um, in your 10 ish plus years as being the Canucks super fan? No, you're right, Joshua. I, I've been blessed. And it, it, you know what it's like on social media. It's tricky. On one hand, I, I, I want to share 
how blessed I am. That's why I'm wearing the shirt, like all the, all the cool stuff I've done. I recognize it could come off as a little bit showy or show offy. And my, my goal isn't to cause envy or jealousy. And I, I really think people that know me, they know how genuinely, genuinely happy I am and how, how blessed I feel. And hopefully they share some of my joy and whatever, but I, I, I get it. But I also get that I, I have been extremely fortunate to, I, I'd say there's been maybe eight to 10 experiences that, um, uh, uh, not normal, but someone else may not have had the chance, but you're right. Even if it's something like watching a game in an empty arena, um, versus, uh, doing some cheers and being featured in an NHL commercial, go Canucks go for the bubble. Um, you know, two that, I, that really stand out to me that were really unique. One of them is I got to play the organ before the game, not during the game. I don't think they trust me, but, um, you know, 50 minutes before the, just be, after the players went off for the warm up, and then the 50 minutes, while they're doing the ice again, I got to play for three minutes on the organ at Rogers arena. So that was pretty cool just to hear my, my not so much magic, uh, come through the, the main speakers. That was really cool. And, um, oh, two, two more real quick. My son, Sean cut uh, caddied for Bo Horvat after his rookie year. So at the Canucks golf tournament. So that was really cool. We had my 14 year old son, Sean driving 19 year old Bo Horvat at the time around the course. It could be a lot worse. And then one last one, um, is, is I was able to help bring Trevor Linden to my, uh, my wife's elementary school to surprise the principal who was the biggest Trevor Linden fan, the grade seven kids of that school actually wrote to the Canucks and I passed it on. I was kind of like the middleman and I helped bring Trevor Linden and Finn to the school to surprise, um, the principal. So a lot of these little things that I don't do it for me, me, look at me, show off, but truly, truly blessed. There's no other way to say it. And I never think that, you know, I'm best friends with the players or that I'm their peer. No, I'm just a 46 year old guy who makes stupid videos. Right. But uh, I do realize how fortunate I've been. Well, I, I kind of want to ask about some of the, those things that you just brought up now. I mean, sure. um, so were you, did you get to golf as well? Or did you just get to accompany uh, your son? Yeah. So no, I didn't get to golf. That one was interesting, Joshua, because that one, he won uh, as season ticket holders, you get perks, right? Oh, Just like yeah, yeah. And lines. Um, and our perk that year, that was a big one. They only took four kids that, that year and he was one of them. So cool. I just drove him there and I was supposed to leave, but I just kind of hung around, you know, talked to watch for <laughs> talk to Kuzma. I just hanging out right there. Like, who's this guy? And then I was supposed to leave and then come pick him up. I just stayed at the course the whole day. So then, <laughs> That's so then he went out and uh, spent the day with Bo. And then the last two years, I've actually myself actually volunteered at the golf tournament. So whether it's nice. driving. Yeah. So I get to meet actually a lot of the players and just, just talk to them and, and just not think that I, like I said, I'm their peer, but talk to them about non-hockey stuff. Anton Roussel is so cool. Jay Beagle, I was like one of the first people he met in Vancouver, like little stories like that was a lot, were a lot of fun. Pedersen, man, so competitive. He, <laughs> this is so bad. He, uh, he was not having fun at last year's tournament because of one of the people in his foursome. And he, like, and I think the guys are trying to remind him, oh, this is for fun. This is charity, but you can see how competitively wired he is. <laughs> Well, we just had the uh, the 25th anniversary of Happy Gilmore, so hopefully he didn't yes. call a whole Happy Gilmore on anyone. Um, <laughs> Shooter, absolutely. <laughs> yes, but that's awesome. Yeah, no, I mean, and, and that's so good that you help out with like with the charity events and, and like you said, I mean, you're not doing it. You're you're a season ticket holder, and some of these things are just perks. And yeah, and I love how you just take it to the extreme with being a fan and wanting to do all these extra things. Well, and, I appreciate that. Thank you. And some of the great extra things, which I am really enjoying, and it it looks like a ton of other people are too. Are your you're just Canucks analysis and game breakdowns, um, basically comment on anything that happens. I mean, you were what like thirty seconds after Francesco Acquilini dropped his thread, you made a video. <laughs> I think it looked like I somebody somebody tweeted at you and they're like, "Whoa, yeah, it was Tash, it was Tash, it was yeah. Yeah, Tash," and she's like, "Geez, chill, it just happened." <laughs> Yeah, that one, I, I think it happened on a weekend or was it on the weekend or I happened to be yeah, home. It was on the, yeah, it was on the weekend. It was right before Saturday, the Saturday right? game. Yeah. yeah, okay. So I did happen to be home. Yeah, even even my work, uh, Joshua, I, I have an opportunity to record a quick vlog in my in my office or I run down to my car or I drive around the block. That's the thing, like with, with my YouTube channel, I try and make it all, all encompassing. And I, I really want to be the preeminent Canucks vlogger. It doesn't mean I have the most views. It doesn't mean I have the most connections or the best production value, but it's consistency for me. And it's, you're right. It's a pregame 
preview. It's a post game analysis. It's a post game live stream for an hour with people like you, which, which is awesome. I was a little bit worried that Rob uh, Faye would completely decimate my audience, but at least so far it's been okay. I think there's a little, plenty of room for content creators as I, as I tweeted about last night. Um, but, but the biggest thing for me is, is being a consistent voice. And I think the reason why I'm able to get my videos out pretty quick is I don't edit them for better, or for worse, right? I don't put transitions, jump cuts, titles, music, special effects. No, I just turn on my iPhone, hook up my microphone and go boom. And that's why I'm able to do those videos that quick, uh, so quickly. And it, I think it's a challenge. It shows for better, or for worse. Again, it shows that it will expose me if I don't know what I'm talking about, because yeah. I'm talking, I'm no notes, no stats, just kind of off the top of my head, just kind of riffing on how I feel especially in the post game live streams, it, it's a very organic feel. And I'm okay with that. I know a lot of people that are much video, better video editors, much better, uh, you know, post production, and that's all good too. I give all respect to them. But my style is I always say this is my Canucks take all in one take. That's, that's my thing, because that's, that's what I like to do. And I think it shows that a what my knowledge of the game and the team, and b that I'm able to speak off the top of my head. No, I do. I really love that. And uh, one of the things that I really want to praise you on with, um, you know, some of your Canucks live um, one hour shows after is your level of engagement with your audience. Like, you know, everybody that's on, you're seeing them, you're like, hey, so and so is talking, you know, about these people, they, they are your audience. Um, and you do such a great job interacting with people and, and having a Canucks conversation about the games and about different things that are happening and including these people's voices. And you can tell by your, you know, your audience and engagement that people really enjoy it. So I appreciate that. And it's tricky because it's YouTube. It's still one way, right? It's not like I have a zoom call with a hundred people, but even here, like I have a list here of, um, of frequent, uh, frequent people's, uh, ages, right? <laughs> You're on here. Oh yeah. Joshua 32. Yeah. So I knew that you're right there, but yeah, uh, it, it's tricky because it is uh, one way. So I don't see their faces, but I do try, uh, and you know this, I know you used to be there when I just started. I used to read every single comment, right? And it wasn't to show off. It was because I want to affirm people for taking the time to type. Now that the streams, thank God, have gotten bigger, I simply don't have time to read every single comment. Otherwise, I'd be an hour behind. So I say questions only. So people are getting creative. They'll say something, they'll put a question mark at the end to try and make oh, me Oh, to trick you. <laughs> I, but overall, I, Sorry. Go well, ahead. I was, I was going to say, I feel bad because one day I kind of let the charge in, in some funny names um trying to get people to post so hey man you you can do whatever you want you you your lifetime a vip but uh, you're, looking, you're like you're... wait a second i'm not saying that <laughs> <laughs> but i do like i i recognize and I, I mean this they could be doing anything else for that that hour or the the 10 minutes they're in they could be studying working hanging out yeah. with family watching tv watching someone else i get that so i say that right at the very start that i appreciate them and i do not take them for granted so if they're asking a question the least i can do is, is do my best to answer and give them a give them an honest well thought out answer well keep it up because i enjoy it and lots of other people do thanks so, brother joined by canucks clay here on the unnamed sports show clay got a couple more for you before sure. i let you go um I, uh, I just kind of wanted to get your thoughts on, um, oh, sorry. <clears throat> oh, sorry. You okay, um, man? Oh, yeah, sorry. No, um, I wanted to get your thoughts on the Braden, uh, Braden Holby's guitar video. Yes. Okay, because I, I know that you're, you're always looking for parody people, so <laughs> you, you tweeted out that you wanted to get him uh, on a parody to do a parody. Yes. With you. Do you have like a dream guest for a parody? And it can be any, it could be absolutely anyone from a sports player to an actual, to a musician. I mean, I know you already have the amazing Marie to do stuff yes. with you, but besides her. <laughs> so to cover my base on the one hand, I already have my dream collab partner. Uh huh. But if, if we could include Marie and someone else, you know, um, I think it would mean a lot if it was a Canucks fan. So someone like Michael Buble, right? Who we know yes. is a Canucks fan. Like, but they wouldn't need me. Marie and Buble <laughs> would start singing and they would basically tell me to, to use the door and don't let it hit me on the way out kind of thing, right? Um, anytime we get a player in, if we're singing, my, my dream would actually be to do a parody song about a player uh, mm -hmm. in a positive way and have that player in our video. 
Imagine oh, if that was, would be a lot of fun. Yeah. Imagine if Pedersen dancing or snapping to how sweet it is to be deep by you. Like just something like that. So, so silly. But I think just anything that's a little creative that way. But yeah, well, hopefully, I, I like that video that the Canucks did. Um, I would have loved to, but maybe he told them not to, right? You could see the B roll of him actually singing while he's playing. But all they actually used was, I'm sure it was him playing just kind of a background, you know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, picking at it so i would love to hear him actually sing but maybe like i said maybe he said uh, don't use this footage but yeah, it'd be cool imagine if it was marie me and and brayden um um and then uh you know maybe uh schmidt dancing doing some background dancing or, or something i was gonna say yeah i was thinking i mean smith shit could throw in some serious one-liners into a parody song oh, that would i feel be a lot of fun so yeah and a lot of our players um i don't know if you get the sense too they they seem to be nice guys for sure but a little on the quiet side right like horvat's not gregarious besser oh. co quite confident but he's not boisterous uh i'd say Pedersen's not like that although he's kind of getting his 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 brand out uh, quinn he was definitely kind of shy yeah um so maybe we would have to go after like a nate schmidt jt miller probably wouldn't want to be there right he just has kind of like that like grumpy face all the time <laughs> so maybe we have to go for a guy like nate schmidt or something jt miller would be like are we done yet exactly <laughs> be like ah, oh, don't JT. We haven't even started. We're we're gonna sing for. He's like, I have to sing. Yeah, exactly, JT. We that was all rehearsal. Now we're gonna do it for real. <laughs> <laughs> I think um I think somebody that who would be a lot of fun with it and uh, is Adam Gaudet, who who seems to have a bit of a personality. He's kind of outspoken a bit and with you know with his gaming stuff on Twitch and uh, seems I to think, have fun with that. I think that's a wonderful suggestion. I think that's really good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, uh, I know that you are, you know, like I said, you're doing your YouTube live streams and things like that. And you're also doing a lot of uh, cool little like YouTube guest shows where you have yeah. awesome Canucks guests to, to come on and chat with you about Canucks. Um, where did you get that idea to start that? I mean, obviously, just kind of, I guess, is the next move forward from doing the you know, the video reviews and things like that is, is having some guests on and great people to, to chat with you about it. Exactly. Yeah. I caught my zoom chat series, Joshua. And, and to be honest, series. I think, um, as much as I do like speaking and, and I, I'm comfortable in front of a microphone or in front of camera, I also think that I'm a, a good listener. Um, and it's just the communication skills that I've learned. So I wanted to not show off my listening skills, but I wanted to bring other people on, get their points of view and then kind of explore that. So, it started off, I did a couple of fan ones first, actually. Actually, Vanessa Jang of the broadcast was really? actually the first one. I did Geo, uh, Lego Rocks, another great Canucks YouTuber uh, for another one. But then I, I started to get a little bold and said, what happens if I ask some of the local sports media? And I think it was Brendan Batchelor who was my first media person. And I've been able to get um, a lot of the local TSN and, and, and Sportsnet guys, so including like Bachelor, Thomas Dran, Sat Shaw, uh, Matt Sakaris. I, I, I'm missing a lot. But then, but then I wasn't afraid to go national either. So I, I was able to talk to James Duthie. I was able to talk to Darren Drager. My most recent one was, uh, you know, I've had Dan Murphy and Ian McIntyre who are, who are quite big followings, right? And then there's one more who I told you about, uh, but I, I got to confirm that first that I'm, I'm hoping to get next. So um, it's just a chance to, you know, what's interesting is for me, I don't, pretend nor do i aspire to be a media member with all due respect to everyone who does it people like you and who are very good at it i'm 46 years old no one's gonna want to hire this this goofy looking asian guy i think um but i love doing it for fun and i love chatting with these guys asking them about their passion for what they do and it's not like they'd be threatened by me anyways but they know that i i'm truly doing it because i admire them and i'm a fan of them and i would like to get their takes on things uh, and that's where it's come from, really. And it's just a wonderful chance for other people to bring these people a different side of all these people that we hear on the radio or, or see on TV, to bring a different side of them to people who, who watch my channel. Well, it's great. And I think, like you said, you you bring a different side of them. They're, they're not specifically talking about sports when you have them on. They're not specifically right. talking about the Vancouver Canucks or this one game that just happened. Yeah. You, know, you can kind of open up and, and you get it. And I, I'm, you know... I'm sure you found this too, but, but talking to a lot of people, they're very happy to open up about past experiences in, in yes. the media and doing things and maybe mistakes. I mean, yeah. I probably have a whole list of things that I write down. Don't do this ever, you know, says that, this person. That, so. That's such a good point because 
people who are doing well like you and like and, and the Joshua Reyes and the Sean Warrens of the world, Larsh Cast, like everyone who's there's so many good and that's a good thing, right? There's so many good content creators in Vancouver. Yes. But if they watch a snippet of, of my video, not to learn from me, but to learn from the person that I'm talking to, then I think that's awesome. And everyone, they all say the same thing, you know, be passionate, be genuine, be consistent, um, make sure you're doing it for the right reasons. And I, I do think there's a lot of room. You just look at all the podcasts that are out there, all the vloggers now, unfortunately, with the sad news of TSN 1040, yeah. those guys are forced to be creative to pivot. Pivot's kind of the, been the word of the year, as you know. So I just think there's a lot of space and a lot of eyeballs and ears to go around to consume this type of content right now. Is it? And it's fantastic to see, like you said, you know, you mentioned some of them with uh, with Sean and Joshua there, and uh, and Malcolm and everyone at uh, yeah. Area Fifty One Network, and of course, you know, um, Chris Faber and David Quadrelli at Canucks Army, yeah, they're, they're just crushing. setting the standard. Um, well, they got like what, like seventeen articles out a day. I think they got they're up to like I think they're up to like four podcasts now. Like I, I don't, I can't keep track. I messaged them when TSN went down. I was like, uh, I'm gonna wake up tomorrow, and you guys are gonna have the whole TSN lineup on Canucks <laughs> Army somehow. And they laughed. They're like, Well, that would be nice. I'm like, yeah. Okay, well, don't take everybody, okay? Um, exactly. <laughs> but you know, it, it is good to see. And then, like you said, you know, the things that we pick up from from some of the guests you may have, and then some of the things that I mentioned that I pick up from you from watching some of your things. And, and I think that anyone who is, is aspiring to do this should, should watch you and, and just kind of take away from your passion and your dedication and your level of enthusiasm and your kind of interaction with your fans. And, and yeah, like you said, you're like, okay, well, this person's going to take the time out of their busy day. They could be doing mm. anything. Instead, they're going to give me 10 minutes, an hour. Well, I'm going to give them a comment and I'm going to learn who they are. I'm going to write down their age. Sure. So it is, it, you know, it's valuable stuff that, that people like myself can, can even take from watching your stuff. And it's really enjoyable as well with your parody videos. Well, I, I appreciate that. And I think I'm in a, I'm in a unique position to where I don't know everything, but I know enough where I think I'm relatively credible yet. I'm not trying to break into the industry. So I don't have to worry so much about, um, I don't know whether it's impressing or, or misstepping I, all those kind of things. I, it doesn't mean I'm, I'm reckless or I'm crazy, but I, I think there's less pressure for me at least. Yeah. That, and that's how I feel. And I hope that comes across. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I don't know. I didn't even know what course he was until last year. <laughs> well, so, you're ahead. You're a year, you're a year ahead of me then. <laughs> I think I, I think I used like plus minus like, like four or five months ago and somebody's like, just looked at me and they're like, nah, man, nah, we don't do plus minus. I'm like, that's oh, awesome. Okay. Um, <laughs> so you're the guy, the guy with me still using goals against average too, right? Yeah. Goals against average. And, uh, yeah, I think, yeah. Takeaways, you know, things like that. Um, really mundane, archaic stats. There you go. That, um, that I write down on my notepads and things and people are like, no, no, you know, you can, I think it was at the white caps game and I was making fun of the guy I looked over and just, you know, four people I'm like, Hey, where's your guys' notepads? One of the guy lifts up his laptop. He's like yeah. right here, bud. I'm like, of Oh, course. okay. <laughs> I was like, well, I have that too, but that's for typing. You know, you write yeah. on the, <laughs> we're like, yeah, you just switch tabs. I'm like, I will get to this eventually. That's awesome. Well, as you put away, as you put away your brick phone, right? As I put it, actually, you know what? I still have a house phone and a, and a fax machine. Awesome. That's and awesome. I will keep it forever. I am a dinosaur when it comes to that. My company is making me advance and learn new stuff, but I will, I will clutch on to the archaic things as long yeah. as I can. <laughs> Love it. Well, Clay, thank you very much for joining me today. Um, like you said, you have some stuff that you have in the works. Obviously, we have the Canucks game tonight against Winnipeg, so we can expect uh, you on your YouTube channel after that. And uh, Absolutely. really looking forward to everything that you have coming out in the future. And thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Joshua. It's nice being on this side of the, the questions for once, but truly, you're doing a great job. And I, I love the, the energy and the passion and creativity that you bring as well. So Let's keep, keep up the good work and let's keep supporting each other. Absolutely, man. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll chat soon. All right. Thanks again. Cheers. All right. So I hope that everyone enjoyed that conversation with Clay Emo, Canucks Clay, super fan. I had so much fun chatting with him about his parody videos, oh, the season, what could come of it, uh, some of the Canucks young prospects, how he got into being a Canucks fan and, and just lots more. Um, we had a little bit longer than we were supposed to, but uh, if my producer would have seen how long we went in the green room chatting beforehand, then probably would have got even more mad at me. 
Uh, if you haven't already, make sure to hit that like button and stay tuned for lots of other great episodes of the Unnamed Sports Show as I got some great guests lined up as the Canucks season rolls along and we have white cap season to look forward to as training camp starts up in March. Also, make sure to check out all of the great NBA highlight videos and my NBA recaps along with all the other great shows. We Just check out everything we offer Sports Talk. I mean, if you're a sports fan, you need to be doing that. I have been your host, Joshua Griffith. I hope you enjoyed this episode. This has been the Unnamed Sports Show here on the Sports Talk Network. And remember, sports fans love sports, all sports. <laughs>